Welcome back to City Trends. Uh, my, ho uh, my name is George Miller. Uh, this segment, we have a, a special guest. He actually is a consultant, and he goes out and gives workshops on communication. But I'm going to let him elaborate a little more. Uh, welcome aboard. Please introduce yourself to the audience and share a little bit about what it is you do. Yeah, Georgia, thanks for having me here. My name is Jim Grant, and I, I'm an awareness consultant. Uh, I've been teaching for over 30 years, and I decided to, hey, I wanted to share some of this knowledge and pass some of this knowledge on, so like I came up with uh, the company. Uh, the title is Four Steps to Self-Benefits. And I work with students, I work with uh, corporations, uh, I have workshops where about I train uh, teachers, instructors, or persons of interest to work with not only students, but a lot of times you find in uh, companies that you have uh, people that have low self-esteem, uh, people that don't really uh, understand values. Yeah, they value uh, material things instead of valuing other things. And then another step is decision making. So like the four steps is, I start with step one, self-awareness. And then we spend a lot of time there because George, you would be surprised at the people, students and young people that have very low self-esteem. And George, you know as well as I do, if you don't have self-esteem, you can't go anywhere, you can't do anything. So like in the program, I work uh, to build students and young people's self-esteem. Now, you're probably saying, gee, how do you build self-esteem? Because that's tough, that's private, and people really don't want you uh, involved in their personal life. And George, you're right, but I do this through uh, activities, and these activities are non-threatening. The students okay. will do the activities, and when they get through, they, gee, what did I just do? An example of one, George, would be a personal code of arms. So they draw six squares, and then I will say in square one, uh, draw something you would never give up. Now they can't write. They have to draw a picture, a symbol, or design in these boxes. So they will draw a picture, a symbol, a design, or something. And they don't have to be an artist to do oh, this. No, oh, no, <laughs> okay. no, no, no. I'm sorry. I forgot that. That's the first thing that I say, hey, don't worry about the artwork uh, because artwork has nothing to do with it. Okay, then I can participate. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So like then, or they go to square two, and it's something you are striving to become. And then they go to a square three. Three things, draw a picture, similar design of three things that you are really good at that you can do. And then they go to square uh, four. What is one thing, depending on the age group that I'm working with, if it's high school or college kids, what do you want to accomplish by the time you're 25? If it's, uh, you know, uh, people in their 20s or 30s, what do you want to accomplish by the time you're 40 or 50? So they do that when the next one is, uh, this is a tough one for them, George. What is a personal motto by which you live? And you would think I was given a test, but they get to look it up and around. They're looking for the answer. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it, yeah. It, should, it should already be embedded right, in them. Right, right, right. But, but George, in this day, time, and age, it's... It's not. It's not. So I give them an example of my personal model by which I live to, which helps them some. Then after that, uh, most of the time, most of the students, uh, even the older students can go ahead, the reentry students can go ahead and put down theirs. And then, George, in square six, are you going to write numbers one, two, three? Okay. And then it's if. If you were to die today, what three things would you want people to say about you? And I, yeah. And that's going to make people think because, you know, uh, I'm getting older myself. And, and one of the things that we have to confront as we get older is impact and legacy. Yes. And what kind of impact have we had while we were here? And what's the legacy that we're going to leave behind? Right. Because all, all the material stuff means nothing at the end of uh, the thank day. You, thank you. Yeah. And so they go through that, and when they finish that, I'll have them to take a minute and look at everything. Look at it, 
and then I usually have them to turn it over on the back side and then write just a paragraph. What did you learn new about yourself? If you didn't learn anything new about yourself, why? And so uh, we do activities like that. Uh, like I said, it's non-threatening. It's not me pushing them in to do something. And then in these training sessions, when I'm training uh, teachers or other person of interest, it's the same thing. We, uh, you don't push. Uh, you give them the opportunity to, to just go ahead, work through it, and you don't even collect them because that's personal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're getting to work at their own pace right, and, right. and grow and, and move forward at their own pace. Right. Right. Yeah. And so they go through that. They do those things then. And we move on to one. Uh, the next step is feelings because everyone uh, feelings is easy to get hurt, even me. So like there, uh, you're probably saying, well, what kind of things? can you do to deal with feelings to make people not uh, want to work in that type of activity? Well, we do things like, uh, first of all, uh, we'll do the colors. So red, blue, black, green. And so I'll have them to write their favorite color down. So when they write their color down, okay, why did you write that color down? So they go back and write, write it down. And then uh, I will go over the color chart. Like, you know, red means you are aggressive, white means you are pure, and then I go through all those things. And then I said, okay, now I give them a list of all the colors okay. to go along with their thing. And I said, well, now, is the color chart right? I can't believe that that's me. Yeah, I didn't know this. So that the color chart gives them a, a little more insight in, into their character right. and, and their values and, and the type of person they are. Right, yeah, yeah. So like, yeah, uh, we'll do things like that. Then also, I will read a story to them. Uh, sometimes I read stories. A quick example would be one of a uh, parachute. Uh, it's a guy that was in the service, and, and in the service, his plane got shot down in Vietnam. And so in the process, uh, he was in a Vietnam prison camp for six years. But when he got out, he came back to the U.S. and then uh, he started on the circuit speaking about uh, his experience. But, but one day, him and his wife was in a restaurant. And the thing is, uh, this guy was sitting two or three tables over and he came over and he said, hey, don't I know you? And, wow. Yeah, and the captain said, no, I don't think you do. He said, yeah, yeah your face really looks familiar. He said, N yeah, but yours doesn't look familiar to me. And he says, uh, wasn't you on the warship uh, Kitty Hawk? Yeah. And didn't your plane get sh shot down? Yeah. Well, I'm the one that was uh, fixing your parachute for you. Yeah, yeah. I fixed all your parachutes. And uh, then after that, the captain, he was just astonished. He said, well, yeah, I should know you, but I don't. And the guy said, hey, that's okay. You made it back safe. That's all that counts. Well, the captain goes home that night, and he's, he's upset. He's mad because he said, you know, I was a captain. He was just a little private down there doing my shoot, uh, you know, in his white bell bottoms. And he said, you know, uh, I'm hurt, I'm sad, because I should have treated him with more respect because he has feelings just like I do. And exactly. Yeah. Very good point. Yeah. And so, you know, I didn't even know who he was, but the captain said, from now on, I'm not going to do that anymore. So... I take that story, George, and I turn it around, and I said, hey, I want you to write about who fixed your parachute for you. And all of a sudden, George, they get to, 
Yeah, because I said, hey, somebody is making it possible for you to be sitting in this seat here. Exactly. And, you know, you're, you're in college as well as I am, and, and we teach classes. And, and the reason why it's so important and these workshops are so important is because you get to stand on the shoulders of giants. Right, right, yeah. And, and what that is is you're getting thousands of years of information and education compressed into that semester. And, and you're getting all the trials and error, where if you were to go out and do it on your own, you would probably make those mistakes over a lifetime right, right. and still not learn from it. And, and that's where upper division education and these workshops play a major role. And then we were also talking about communication, and there's a couple things that I, I notice, and I, I teach it in, in, in my workshops, and, and one, one mistake that a lot of people make is as soon as someone says something to them, and they think, oh, I know, I know where this conversation's going. Right, right, right. They right, automatically right. shut them out, and right. they start formulating a response, and now they're just waiting to respond. And when you do that, you miss key components of that dialogue. And then the other thing I noticed is, because I was in the military, and when I was overseas, and then I came back, I was like, other countries don't do this. One of the things that we do here in the States is we communicate with sarcasm. Right, right, and right. And so if you have five buddies with you in the military and we made a mistake or you're working for the police department or fire department, the other four don't come up to you at lunch and say, hey, it's okay, better luck right, next time. Right. They make a sport out of your deficit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's actually a, a form of bonding. Right. And, and we do that in our culture all the time. But other cultures don't understand that. And so that's one of the things that we need to remember in communication is where are they coming from and what's their point of reference? Excellent. And I think you would agree with yes, that. Yes, yes. Oh, yes, definitely with that there. Yeah. And uh, the third area is values. And I know, George, we're running short on time here. So, like, values is the third step. So we start with self-awareness, get you feeling good about yourself. And we go to feelings, get you to understand that uh, you have feelings, but understand that other people have feelings, too. And so then, you know, it really... Uh, makes you to begin to think. What I do a lot of times, George, is uh, with this exercise here too, I will also have them to take out their cell phones. And now I want you to call somebody that's been uh, fixing your parachute for them and tell them thank you and tell them how much you appreciate them. That's some great advice. Good yeah. stuff. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, if uh, someone in our audience wants to get a hold of you, can you share with them how they can get a hold of you? Okay, uh, right now uh, my uh, website is not up, but uh, they, uh, you can get a hold of me by calling 821-1146. That's my awareness consulting uh, company's number, and I will definitely get back to you. Hey, Jim, thanks for coming on. Okay, I, I really appreciate it. You guys, get a hold of Jim. He's got some great stuff here. We got to cut to commercial break, and we will be right back.